Well, hello everyone and welcome to Wednesday's edition of Reptile News. Now, we're going to start off today in New York with a frog phobia and a lot of money. Now, this story is about the owner of a road construction company and you wouldn't think a contractor would be scared of a little itty bitty froggy. But apparently a neighboring property undergoing development had diverted some water improperly and turned quite a bit of his property into a wetland that was friendly to frogs. He, uh, according to this news article, had to call his daughter over two or three times a week to shoo the frogs away. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to laugh, but it's so funny. Well, the State of Appeals Court apparently awarded him $1.6 million because he was so terrified of the little frogs. In fact, he is so afraid of frogs that one time he paid a worker $65 an hour at a road construction site to walk around with a bucket and relocate some frogs so he could uh, just be there. How's that one working out for you? Now let's move on to Oregon, where sheriff deputies responding to a tip actually found an alligator being kept in a shed just south of Portland. Apparently the report says that the uh, owners did move, but a relative had returned to take care of and feed this alligator. The alligator was determined to be between 12 and 14 years old. Alligators are illegal in the state of Oregon without a special permit, which was not issued. And now we're going to move on to our BAMF of the day, an Indonesian from Komodo National Park apparently was attacked by by a Komodo dragon, where she had fought the dragon off by hitting it several times in the nose with a broom. Oh, did I happen to mention that she was 80 some odd years old as well? It took about 20 stitches to uh, fix the wounds on her hand from the bite, and uh, yeah, bamf of the day. 83 year old woman fighting off Komodo dragon. Not somebody I want to cross. And now we move on to our top story, which was not does not directly affect reptiles, but it does affect animals in general, I suppose. And that is out of Roseacre Farm, where this post was written about how to avoid hiring an animal rights activist. You see, apparently they hired an animal rights activist who took three hours of footage, edited it down to three minutes, and uh, held a press conference about the abuse and terrible stuff that was going on here. Oh, by the way, did I mention this was an activist uh, belonging to the Humane Society of the United States? Now, they do say that now, looking back on things, it was perfectly clear that this person had falsified their work history. They were from out of state, their permanent address was a cheap, sleazy local motel, and they said basically what they're saying is for you to avoid hiring an animal rights activist from the HSUS or from PETA or one of the other many eco-terrorist groups out there, look into the work history, check the references, do that, go that extra mile to uh, look into these people that you hire. Now, of course, Roseacre Farm, the second largest egg producer in the nation, did hold their own press conference where they invited me media um, crews down to their farms to see how they operate. They were taken up on their offer and there was no evidence found to substantiate anything that the HSUS uh, fake douchebag employee found on the farm. I recommend anybody that works in this business, in this reptile business or any animal business, really if you're going to read any story, read this story and understand it. So hopefully you can avoid hiring an animal rights activist who's only object is to come in and destroy what you do and destroy what we do. And that, my friends, has been all your news for this Wednesday. If you'd like to read any more about these stories, that link's right down below here in the description. And as always, if you're still watching, my name is Jason White. Now you know what's going on in the reptile world. Be good to each other, and we'll see you tomorrow.